West staying on top of Munchak. Paul Childerly is out for the first time stalker. And that's not the only quadruped we're after. Michaela's in Africa trying to live capture big game. We've got hunting YouTube, we've got news stump. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. As much as Paul Childerly loves deer and deer stalking, he needs to spread the love. Otherwise, he can't afford the finer things in life, such as using spring water for wiper fluid. How the other half lives. Let's make sure you're not sparkling. Tonight, if we see a nice young roebuck, try and get Joe to shoot that. Otherwise, it'd be Munchak Coles. And if there's a nice roebuck, I may see if I can maybe have a little go myself. We'll see. <laughs> On this beautiful evening, he is taking out Jo. She only got into stalking in March, but the bug has well and truly bitten. This is new, so this is probably my second season with Paul on game and my second outing out stalking, so I'm, I'm a novice and uh, really enjoying getting into the sport, really, learning all about it. For me, the adrenaline of being on a rifle is something that I do struggle with. So uh, it's it's finding that you know that moment where you can calm yourself down and, and feel yourself relaxing. It's a it's a nice way to unwind and enjoy the countryside, and you know what better way to do it really? Paul's clients come in all shapes and sizes and a range of experience and skill, but he thinks the novice ladies are the easiest to work with. <laughs> men will hate this, but I enjoy taking women more than men because you'll tell them something and they put exactly what you tell them into uh, practice. You know, on the range, they're normally 100% brilliant. Um, great groupings and, and, you know, great sort of like safety as well. They always take the safety part really on board well. Okay, okay. Hello, our first port of call is a small block of woodland. Paul takes Joe through the drill. The Seiko Carbon Light 85 in 243 is now Paul's go-to estate rifle. It doesn't matter if you are a tiny size 6 like Joe here or a world champion kickboxer. It is light, flexible and looks good on a Shooter King clad shoulder. At the end of the ride, Paul sees a rabbit and uses it to keep Joe on her toes. That was a test for you. Because basically if that was a deer we wanted to shoot and it took us ages, we wouldn't have got it. So, so at least we've done it on a rabbit. That's the whole point, didn't it? See? Just to go through the motions. Otherwise, when we get a deer... Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we drive to the next part of the estate, we spot Roe and Muntjac, if fleeting and jumping. This time, Paul uses the cherry whistle to see if it'll get things moving. Get the attention with the, the patello when they're further away. Um, pull him in until he roughly knows, see them in the distance, and then just go to the cherry wood and just tune him in, whistle him in, like the Pied Piper. In the undergrowth, a muntjac comes for a closer look, then a rodo comes charging in. Our next encounter is with a far more impressive animal. That's a good puck. That's puck he is. I'll make him a phone call. It's a possible medal and not something Joe wants to go for, but Paul considers it for himself. To be honest with you, he was on the plate when he, when he, he stood up, he looked the other way, he stood up on the sticks, bang, he, he got it back. Not good today. Come on, I think that Joe won. Yeah, yeah, good puck, yeah, cracking puck. Good to get that close to him as well. Um, slightly longer on one side, probably, 
probably just about a medal I'd say, probably, yeah. probably a good, good bronze maybe or silver. But yeah, good luck. With the light disappearing, we chance upon a couple of Munjak. Joe might have a chance after all. It's just over the other side of the fence. Not really clear enough. No, not clear enough. All good. Well done, well done. Excellent. Thank you. Well done, Joe. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done. Good shot. Great. Older Joe. She had that. The other one that was with her was an old, old fawn. Right, okay. Um, which was uh, obviously a, you know, she survived fine on her own. Um, so it's a good one to take, really. I was waiting for it to move as well. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Well, the thing was, we. The first part of the stalk, just so you know, the first part of the stalk we stalked in, we got it, and it was on the other side of this fence line. It's only a 243, and you know, you only get a bit of grass or hit a bit of wire. That's why I was quite sort of firm saying no. And they didn't know we were there right until the very end, so it was good, which gives you a bit of time to get on the sticks. Yeah. And like you say, you were really good, patient, which is good because the two animals were lying right up. Yeah. And uh, it's just waiting that I didn't know which one was going to move yeah. because they were both lined up pretty yeah. you know, fairly well. That's no, perfect. And then she waited and then she decided it wasn't right and then she did turn. She just turned as you shot. Yeah. But you hit her in the front end. You had to aim a little bit high like we spoke about earlier because we're in longer grass. But she's on the spot where, you, where, where she uh, was standing. So it's great. Good shot. Well done. Thank you. First month, Jack. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> I think one of my challenges is the adrenaline when you, when you know that it, you know, you're looking to, to take a shot. So it's just finding that moment where you're not waiting too long, but uh, at the same time, trying to calm yourself. So yeah, it's good and just waiting for, for one of them to move. So yeah, it's really good. On this particular area, they've got a lot of muntjac, um, um, but the roe deer, there's some cracking you know, bucks here. Where the actual, the area where the, the most, most amount of muntjac are, the bucks have got a lot poor in the last like 10, 15 years. So basically we're, we're trying to knock a few of them all the muntjac off and uh, trying to get the, the quality of the roe a bit better. So. That's the main object of sight, you know, culling, culling out the uh, muntjac here. After Paul Gralix the deer, he tests a new bit of kit given to him by a client. I had a guy over from Denmark stalking back in March some Chinese water deer. At the end of the hunt, he gave me this as a present. He said he hadn't tried it, but he, he would love me to try it and do us like a, a bit of a, a review on it. And I've not been one for using like blood torture or anything, but it's a, it's a Primus um, blood hunter. Um, and it's the first time he just, tried, just tested it. The normal torch, and here's the the bloodhound. It's so much clearer. Let's go back again. I'm so really impressed with that. It uh, intensifies the contrast between obviously the green and the red, um, and it brings it out a lot clearer. Yeah, really impressed. You need to do a bit of tracking. So that was probably something I'm going to keep in the rucksack from now on. So yeah, great. Thank you very much. It's a useful test, but thanks to Joe keeping cool, we don't need to use it in anger tonight. For more information about Seiko rifles, go to gmk.co.uk. And for more information about Paul's Shooter King clothing, go to shooterking.com. Well done, Joe, and thank you, Paul. Next up, somebody else who's working their way up from the bottom, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump.
This is Field Sports Channel News. The UK's national game fair season has opened with a whimper rather than a bang. The Field and Country Fair at Cornbury Park in Oxford attracted fewer than 90 stands and just a few thousand visitors. But many of those who went said it was the game fair they'd been waiting for for years. I think this is fantastic. It's gone back to the old as it was. People stop and talk. We went over to have a drink. It took us 15 minutes to get there because people were stopping and talking. And, and I think some of the country fairs that we've been having involved in over the last few years have lost that. I think this is a true countryman fair in the fact of field sports people are involved. Doesn't matter what walk of life you are, what society background you come from, everybody's equal and everybody stops and enjoys it. It's just a week until the British decide whether to stay or leave Europe. And as you can imagine, we're all very excited. Our balanced and factual film last week about which is worse for hunting, a British government or a European government attracted 100% leave comments. It coincided with the news that a European commissioner nearly got a gun ban through after claiming that there had been 100,000 deaths in the EU with legally held firearms. She was out by 99%. But we're all about fairness here at Field Sports Channel, so here is Neil Parrish, MP, former MEP, and in charge of the timetable for repealing the fox hunting ban. He backs Remain. Well, 70% of our game birds get exported into the EU market. A lot of our, our eggs and poults come in from the EU. So the actual trade between all the, all the European countries through the single market is really useful. Also, they're, they're, the countries of Europe actually are quite keen on hunting. So it's, it's one of those issues where I actually think being in the EU actually helps the argument about hunting is a good thing and country sports are a good thing. And I think if we isolate ourselves away, I don't think it's good. The British Association for Shooting and Conservation has appointed Christopher Graffius as the interim chief executive. He is with new Basque chairman Peter Glenser in this shot. Last week, Basque staff accused some of the Basque council of bullying them. This fracas led to the departure of both Basque council members and Basque staff, including chief executive Richard Alley and then chairman Alan Jarrett. The Basque AGM will be held in Chester on Saturday the 18th of June. Don't miss it. Big Game Hunting employs 53,000 people in sub-Saharan Africa. That's the conclusion of new research by Safari Club Foundation. Each year between 2012 and 2014, almost 19,000 international hunters, mostly from the US, visited the eight African countries studied in the report, spending on average two weeks and $26,000. A lion that attacks a hunter in a YouTube film with the hashtag, hashtag stop trophy hunting is a fake. YouTube user Jaden Tanner published a video purportedly showing footage of a trophy hunter being attacked by a lion while posing for a photograph with another lion she had killed. However, as well as some problems with the continuity, the lion she shot is the same lion as this one posted in 2013. That hasn't stopped Jaden Tanner's film getting four million views. And finally, a fox has got stuck in a dishwasher in London. This video was taken by Simon Hayes, who was doing household chores when he found the animal. He's a vet and he freed it. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's see what the rest of you have been up to. It's Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, it's Chase from Norfolk, been out with Dave and John, been lamping for the big guns tonight, got ourselves a little one. Hello Charlie, Mark Strat Stratton here again, out stalking Munt Jack this morning, no look as yet, but what I have seen for the first time on this permission is a nice Chinese water deer. I've got a video of it to send you, and I'll let you know how we get on later. Hi Charlie, it's Steve from Kent on the Pigeon Shoot in Essex today, um, it's a new permission, I've had 44, which is good because it's been a bit quiet recently, so it's nice to get a few. I'm off to Kazakhstan working in about a week, so I thought I'd get a day in before I went. And if I've got an internet connection, I'll watch you when I'm there. Hello, Charlie. Just out here doing a bit of uh, crow decoying. Have a look. It's a bit miserable. And to be honest, there's not really a lot moving about, but it's still better than be at work. Yeah, g'day, Charlie. I'm Andrew off the Darling Downs here in Australia. Just up on top of the dam, picked up a crow with me 2 to 3 
about 125 yards out. Keep videos coming. Cheers, Cobber. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. And it's competition time now. We have a super prize worth around £500 this week. It's a special little gadget. I love it. It's a thermal device that plugs into the bottom of your phone, whether it's Android or iPhone, and it shows you what heats up behind you. It's made by Seek Thermal, and uh, they're just about to bring out a new one called the Compact XR Pro. This is what I look like all oranged up. To find out more, just go to the website that's appearing on the screen now. All you have to do to enter the competition is write iPhone or Android in the comments below this or the comments below the same competition on Facebook. And we'll draw the winner sometime next month from my hat. Don't forget the through night torch competition still going strong. Have a look at last week's airheads to find out how to enter that. Next up, they've let Michaela back into Africa. Wake up in an African hunting lodge and you never know quite what the day will hold. Michaela is at Inkulu African Safaris in South Africa and today she is going to go after kudu, but first she's off to watch some dart gunning. The Inkulu guys have to catch up some sable antelope, so they call in a chopper. If these were farm animals like sheep, they could use a sheepdog, but these are big African antelope with dangerous horns. They get a stunning flying display for their money as the pilot tries to get the shooter, not Michaela, into position. Once the animals are tagged, the team waits around to make sure they regain full consciousness and then releases them back onto the range. That excitement over, it's time to get out onto the trail of Kudu, one of South Africa's most magnificent antelope. It's a long walk in. Inkulu is a private reserve of 20,000 hectares, 50,000 acres, in South Africa's Eastern Cape. It's home to 50 game species, all of them huntable. They finally see an animal. At least the professional hunter and the cameraman see it. Once she is onto it, it's simply a case of squeezing the trigger. Yes! <laughs> yes, we got him. Finally. Finally. Finally I got the kudu. It was a long day walking. You can see where we climbed up to the hill actually and there he was. Yes. They call in a truck and the staff load the animal aboard. Inkulu has a full-time game handling facility and it's important to get all shot animals into it as quickly as possible. But after the truck has gone, their day is not over. Further into the hills, there is another kudu. Well done. This one is a steep climb. Michaela is just as delighted with it as the first. And this is it. All day walking, crawling in the hills. And this is resolved. This is a beautiful grey ghost kudu and I'm so happy. It's a trickier job for the staff to extract the carcass, but they do it and Michaela can return to the lodge a happy hunter. If you want to know more about hunting here, go to inkulu.com and look out for our dedicated African hunting show, Field Sports Africa. For more from Michaela, go to michaelkashunting.com. From South Africa to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Potterek 81 Hunting is after a metal roebuck in Poland and finds success in the rain. He estimates this animal to be about 8 years old. Jaeger TV takes his nice little breech loading rifle out after wild boar. He's meant to be thinning them out from a wheat field, but ends up just filming them. Trophy roebuck hunting in Obranovac, northern Serbia is another wheat field exercise, but this time with more success. To Pakistan for an unusual hunting video. This is big, fast dogs after even bigger and usually faster boar. Over the border in mainly anti-hunting India, the government has a problem with native antelope, Nilgai in Makama, so they call in shooters to cull them. Not very well, as this lurid news report shows, but could it be a sign that India is softening its attitude to hunting? I am enjoying the work of American hunting filmmaker Ron Spomer more and more. This film shows duck hunting in the wetlands of Nebraska's beautiful sand hills. Jonas Breda is calling foxes and digging badgers with Tor Ola Deli, who is the warrener of Norway. And finally, we featured practical shooting recently on our new show NRA TV. Here it is in the Ukraine in this well-made romp through an IPSC day, mainly images over music. Let's hope they don't have to do this for real. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. You can do all that on our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can also subscribe to us on YouTube or pop your email address into our register page, our constant contact box, and we'll constantly contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.